In this film, you will see my work as a trainer for nearly eight months. The film describes how I work and builds up my training strategy. The work is not aimed towards the filming in particular. This is simply how I work with horses. The same can be said about my previous film, in which I focused on the training of young horses. There you can see many of the things that lead up to the training you will see in this video. I advise you to view these films in relation to each other, since they are connected. The filming took place at my training center Stadur, and at many other locations in Borgafjörður, in Western Iceland. It's been a tradition in Iceland for years to staple horses around the new year and to train them until summer. Therefore, we start filming around the middle of January by driving home from pasture the horses that will be in training this season. I allow them to be outside when they can have good space to play and interact with each other and graze, since that keeps them content. This is important for the horses. If we have the chance to allow them to play outside, they will be more balanced mentally and more open to working with the trainer, since they have satisfied their social needs with other horses and that relieves tension. Furthermore, they have been mobile and releasing extra physical energy through interaction with other horses. When the horses have been shot, there is nothing that prohibits a short ride, especially when the weather is this good and the riding trails great. Here we see Inkaloa on Glima, a eight-year-old mare that you may recognize from my pre-training tape. I am riding Bjartur, a seven-year-old five-gated stallion. In the beginning of the training season, the horses normally have been resting out on pasture, getting two to three months off from training and riding, so they are fairly fat, heavy, and not in a great shape, which is to be expected. In the beginning, I'm not thinking about particular gates, but I ride a bit of everything and keep the training light and fair. The main thing at this point is to get the horses in shape. It's good to pony the horses if they know how to do that and the riding horse is used to that. It gives the trainer a good feeling and is a vital part of overall training process. Before we go further, it's good to go back to some of the things we taught the horses during that pre-training period. This is Lisingur, a seven years old four-gated horse. I'm going through the essential steps regarding the cooperation and connection between man and horse. The horse should respect me, and if he comes too close to me, I slow him down by using the lead rope, make myself big, and he moves away from me. Since he has enough space to move in, he does not feel uncomfortable doing this. Lisingur was trotty while he was being pre-trained, and for this type of horse, it's a relief to practice tölt without the bridle and the rider. Working like this is adding variety to training and making it more interesting for the horse. When the horse knows certain work, lunging for example, one does not have to limit it to the riding arena and can take it out of there. It makes a good variety for the horse and the trainer to vary the environment and to use whatever facilities there are. The Atlantic winter weather creates many options in riding and training. If one is so lucky to have an icy lake close to home, this makes one of the most interesting and fun ways to work with horses in the winter. I am lucky enough to have a few lakes at my farm, and I use them as much as I can when they are frozen. Here I am on the ice with Lisingur. He's a bit trotty and not quite clear in the gate, but I'm not worried about allowing horses like this to fall into trot from Tölt. 
It's a reward for him after tilting, and he will be happier to tilt again. If he feels rewarded for tilting, he is more likely to keep on developing the tilt. I find it hard to follow his big trot, but I do my best to be soft in my body, loose in my hips, to keep my heels down and the rein contact soft. Haira is a seven-year-old five-gated mare. She's a bit heavy on the forehand and I need to make sure she does not lean on the rein. I do that by riding her forward and keep my rein contact alive so that way she will have to carry herself. Even if the horses are willing to perform on ice, probably since ice promotes bounce, we should watch out that we don't ask too much from the horses and also let them enjoy the ride. This, and the fact that it is so early in the training season, is why I don't ask for pace, even if it's tempting with this great opportunity. Sometimes I feel this is the best time of the year. Nature and weather creates a very dramatic atmosphere. Riding on the ice creates a certain measure, and if the horses will be equally good in the spring as they are on the ice, the training has been successful. Now I will work with the horses in the double lunge. I connect the outer rein through the circingle and to the snaffle bit. The inside rein goes through the snaffle ring and to the circingle. This way it's easier for me to bend the horse to the inside of the circle and it will also make the horse flex better at the pole. I emphasize I want the inside rein to be soft and flexible and the outside rein to be with very little or no contact. It's my experience that through the weight of the rein alone, the horse will work correctly, soft and balanced, because he feels good and is not forced to flex or yield to the rein contact. This is something the horse understands and agrees to. The horse needs to be cooperative, to move with every rhythm and tempo, and to be without tension, although I want him to be focused on me. I cannot and do not want to have a set frame around the lunch work. I use my imagination, my experience and improvise, depending on the type of horse I'm working with at the moment. If the horse has a positive attitude, I like training tossed with this method, but only for a short time. Notice the slack reins. At standstill, the horse should be calm and confident, thinking, maybe this is not so bad after all. I wonder what we will be doing next. When sending the horse away from us, we need to be careful to give the rein freely. Otherwise, we are sending the horse a mixed signal, to go, but yet to stay. This makes him unsure about what to do. Patti is a six-year-old four-gated horse. Here he is trotting at a good and even speed. I'm aware that he is stiffening his inside and I know it will take time to open and soften both sides equally. Here it's wise to take one's time. If it's easy for the horses to canter on a circle, I sometimes use the double lunge and ask them to canter, but only for a short while and on a loose rein. I'm holding the rein as if I were riding the horse, so that the feeling is similar. Djokni is a eight years old five-gated horse. Let's look at this work before we go further.
Play day will now be introduced. Play days are approximately two to four times a month and are intended to add variety to the training and also to break up the routine. If the horse is well pre-trained, I do many exercising during a regular trail ride. It's all a part of the ride. The horse is being ridden in a relaxed way and I get a chance to work with him. Here I utilize the canter movement to let the horse fall into trot and the gait is free, balanced and fun for the horse. When I ask a horse to canter out on the road, I ride an S-curve, put more weight on my inside seat bone, the right one here, I use my forward encouraging aid, close to the shoulder on the inside, and close to the hint of the horse on the outside. Then, I follow the movement of the horse, at medium speed, up a sloping hill. This is a very important exercise for five-gated horses. It improves the canter, and instead of asking the horse to pace, it's encouraged and allowed to fall into trot. The horse knows the cue to slow down from the pre-training period, and with the five-gated horses, it's important to teach them to slow down before they are asked to pace at full sprint. It's important early in the training to keep the end goal in mind. Here I am exercising gait changes in canter and I close the open area of the arena. The positive side of this arrangement is that the horse finds his own balance without the weight of a rider. The next step would be to do this under the same circumstances with the rider. I use my body positioning to get his attention. Djaukni is a high-strung type, but I still want him to pay good attention to me. When I'm satisfied, I will make myself neutral and leave him alone. Then he'll calm down and I can approach him. Here you can see the same reflexes. Sometimes the cues need to be a bit exaggerated, but it's okay if you just know when to stop. It can create a fun mood for the horses and the trainer to work together in pairs. When the horse is in canter, I follow the movement with my seat and calves as much as needed. I try to move with the horse as if he would be cantering on his own without the rider and stay out of his way so he can move more freely. The next step would be to ride with light rein contact. Some five-gated horses find it difficult to perform this exercise in such small space. Those horses are ride light canter outside a sloping hill where it's easier for them to find their own balance. 
This would be called to take into account the different types of horses and their varied abilities. I emphasize coordination. Here I turn Bjartur around from Tolt and ask him to trot in the other direction. Simple and fun. This is a good example how one can develop something the horse knows from the pre-training period. It's very important to set up the situation so that you are likely to get what you're aiming for and the piece to do it. It would be unfair in the beginning to expect the horse to stay on the circle without setting it up and mark the track for him. This is Tintur, a five-year-old five-gated stallion. Here the situation helps me to soften up his left side and get good flexibility in the tuft. For this exercise to work out, all the muscles in his body must be soft and relaxed. He also has to listen, understand the exercise and agree to perform it without resistance. I need to watch out for my own balance in the saddle. To interfere with the balance of the horse is to get in his way and make it more difficult for him to do what we are asking. Tintur is in good mental balance and walks as if this was nothing special for him. And that's how it should be. Here we see a comparison of the turnaround with a rope halter and then ridden. One thing leads to another and the horse learns to connect something he has learned earlier with a new, more advanced exercise. When I pony or lead horses I use rope halter. I put it under the bridle and connect the rein through the snaffle rings. The lead horse is glad to be rid of direct contact to the mouth. In the pre-training the horse learned to pony and it's easy for me to get him to touch by my side. I control this with one hand and with the other, my seat and calves, I control Lisingur. He knows this kind of work, understands it and leads well himself. When Djaukni has touched it for a short while, I reward him by letting him stretch in trot. Here I am riding Glima and leading Ljettir, a 13-year-old competition horse. Ljettir has extensive training and experience and there is no need to ride him daily to get him into shape. Years of competition training is hard on horses and to avoid overtraining and boredom, I focus on maintaining his natural qualities by keeping the training varied and within certain limits. Early in the winter, it's mostly leading and free work. Ljettir is an honor guest in this film and will be presented later. Here I am working with Patti and preparing him for an exercise that is called to move the horse with the weight of the rider. I let my inside rein touch him, move myself out and to the side and take him with me. Then the reward comes in the form of relaxing the reins, especially the inside rein, and I place myself right behind him again. Then I bring him away from the circle to a straight track that has been set up. This track helps me to keep the attention of the horse and allows me to work in peace. The goal is to keep the horse flexed but let him move straight forward. This helps soften the horse in his sides, pole and neck. Here I'm doing the same, except here I have Tintur and I'm sitting on him. 
I sit in a balanced seat but turn my body slightly to follow the bend of the horse. I use the inside rein in calves like I use the inside double lunge. My outside calf guards the outside hindquarters and encourages the horse to move forward. Then I introduce this into the 12th exercises and if I feel the horse does not soften his inside enough, I take him with me and release again. Finally, I turn around and halt. How to move the horse. I move the upper body to the side, brace the horse with my inside calf, take both reins to the side and take the horse with me. When the horse has responded, both reins are released and I sit in a balanced seat with even weight on both seat bones. When the horse knows this exercise, it can be used without being obvious, as you see me do here. I need to get Hyra off the rein and get her to be lighter in tilt. To be able to take the horse with one's weight is a great feeling, loosens and improves the tilt and works for both four and five gated horses. I am very careful that all cues and rewards are correctly administered and timed. Hyra is happy and soft in both sides. She carries herself and works freely in the front. All of this gives a positive and happy look to the horse. Here we see another positive effect of being able to loosen up the horse with the weight of the rider. Lee Singur is stiff in his left side and is pressing in on Djokni. I flex him to the left and take him with me to the right. This is how I get him to listen and the problem is solved. I feel all work with horses is a challenge. One has to understand the horse and then be extremely resourceful and imaginative. An old timer in Iceland, Hesta Bjarni, said, train and handle your horse as if he were your playmate. I think it is both necessary and fun to break up the training pattern every now and then and play. This is another example of adding variety to the training of the horse. This is not about the height of the jumps, rather what I have to work with based on my earlier work with the horse. It's like improvising in a theatre. Glömur is seeing this stuff for the first time and this has not been practiced at all. I'm sending him both over and past the jumps so there is no particular pressure on him which way to go. This way I can influence the horse without him noticing too much. If things don't work out, don't bother. Find another way to do things. There is always another way. Test your imagination. Use your experience and play things by the ear. In all play, there is always some purpose, and maybe this shows our work with the horses in a nutshell. 
one should approach the horse without him noticing it too much and not take it too seriously if things don't work out perfectly. At least he's trying. Approach him in a good way and things will go better next time. Now we are at the point of starting pace training. Sometimes I keep the boots with me in my pocket and put them on when I need them. This is to avoid possible soaring of the horse. The horse knows the canter depart and the slowdown. This is about how to cue the horse to pace and to keep the gait. I ask Glömur to do a left canter, and then I place more weight on my right seat bone, give him a cue with the left rein, while the right rein is a supporting rein, and lift up his head a little. I encourage him to speed with my calves and lead him forward with the reins. In the beginning the speed is not important, and the horse does not need to be fast. The horse needs to find his balance and gain courage to be able to find more power and forward thinking in his gait. Forward thinking an initiative is when the horse puts his own energy into working without too much encouragement from the rider. Let's look at this again from a different angle. Bjartur is an experienced pace horse, but this is the first pace sprint this winter, and I make it short and positive. Tintur is touching freely and the canter deep part is good, but at this point in the training he is not prepared enough to know fully how to perform. He is thinking too much about the touch. This needs to be given more time and more training. The goal of work in hand is to enhance the sensitivity and understanding between man and horse. Here I am with Hyra. With a cue from my hips I get her to yield and flex a little, to soften the inside and flex at the pole. The crop is encouraging her to move forward. The next step would be to keep contact on both reins and cue her with elbow and crop. The third step would be to take the rein in one hand and cue her by pointing my elbows toward her hint and the crop at the shoulder. The fourth step would be to get the horse to turn by your side. I keep the reins in one hand and the crop in the other. This is just like riding. I move the horse forward so I can influence the form or outline of the horse using my reins.
there are many ways to change leads. Here you see one. The goal is to get Lysingur to think forward and then to be formed on a loose rein in Tölt. When the cooperation between man and horse is good, that is, the horse is happy and listening, I can cue him by using the rein, asking him to form himself. Since he feels good and I reward him by giving him the reins immediately again, he agrees and does what I ask. This is a principal rule in preparing the horse to collect later on. At this point in the training, Lysingur had an accident and had to be given a time off. We will therefore not see more of him in this film. All exercise is good for the rider. But there are limits. This is why the workhorse was invented. The condition he needs to fulfill are for himself to be positive and know the cues and aids that are needed. Here I am training both horses in Tölt. By keeping them both flexed, they will become softer in their bodies and the tempo will be better. I can feel the horse I'm riding, but I'm watching the other one. This is how I can control them separately. Now I will do the same outside. In the beginning I prepare myself to do this on foot. It's best to be positioned behind the horse and a little sideways, as if I would be if I were riding. The rein is used in the same way and I emphasize that it's as loose as possible. Before you go, tie a simple knot on the rein. This counts for all double launch work. If the knot tightens, I need to adjust things. When I start this work, I bring with me an extra rein, and when I have finished my double lunge work, I approach the horse carefully and attach the rein to the bridle and remove the other one. Then, I walk the rest of the way and leave the horse behind me. When I want to work with two horses at the same time, it's wise to fasten the double lunge to the girth and use a regular rein and lead the horse with that away from the stable. On the way home, I attach the double lunge and make my way back home. It's important that the rein horse is thinking forward and energetic. This is why I use the way back home to do this. All goes well and there's a positive feeling and energy that allows me to work on Glömur. He's a very independent character but we negotiate the speed and he lifts himself up nicely in the tuft. Here I am simply riding outside. One of the important aspects of training is just riding the horse, but not to make him work at specific exercises all the time. Now, I want to continue training the pace. Bjartur is in a positive mood and is getting into shape.
I prefer to call this chapter a middle chapter. I cue the horse to pace from a fairly slow speed and ask him to stay in the pace at average speed. I place myself in a pace seat, which means that I tighten my back a little, just like the horse when he paces, look forward, and my calves are at his sides. I'm prepared to encourage the horse to move more forward if needed. Then I slow him down with my voice and soft half halts from the rain. Now the basics and earlier preparation will be tested more and more. That is to say, the canter part, the response to the pace cues and aids, the balance and pace, and the slow down response. If any of these are not working correctly, one has to go back in the training process and prepare the horse better, or else there is a danger of tension and stress building up in the horse. If the horse starts to be nervous and builds up negative feelings towards the pace, it will normally affect the other gates as well. I have a good feeling for Djokni. As you see, I'm riding him with an Icelandic shank bit. I want to explain how they are used. There is a saying that shanks make a good horse better and a bad one worse. Probably that's correct, but the shanks can be a reward and a change from the snaffle bit. These are the shanks I use. It's a three-piece bit to dim the pressure on the tongue and provide a good space for it. I use the shank so I can leave the horse more alone. I feel it's okay to try the shanks when the horse is calm and knows all the basic aids and cues. The rider needs to have a very good balance so that he can correctly influence the reins with his hands, for example by giving and releasing at the exact right moment. Djokni is balanced. He walks with energy in his step and chews on the bit. I feel immediately that things are looking good. At the walk I start to think about myself. Is my weight correctly distributed in the saddle? Are the heels the lowest point? Am I flexible enough? Do I transfer my weight to the inside at the right time when riding the bend? Are my shoulders relaxed? Are my hands sensitive enough? To put it simple, am I doing things correctly? After warming the horse up in walk, I ask him to trot. I lighten my seat to relieve the horse's back and allow him to be fairly low. I have light rein contact and he offers me a nice flexion at the pole. His back is moving freely and the way he carries his tail shows that there is no tension. The bit is loose, but through the heaviness of the bit and slight contact with the chain every now and then, he yields towards my hand. Djokni is now warmed up, and I'm preparing him to tölt. He's been having a problem with yielding to the bit, and so he won't have a reason to go against it, I maintain very shuttle but precise cues from my hands through the rein. And it also helps that he is flexed. This exercise can be called one form of the shoulder in, and its purpose is to soften the horse and make him stronger. Since I'm using shanks, I keep my rein contact especially free and alive in the tölt. I follow Djokni with my seat and inside calf and keep my forward thinking strong. The horse feels this and it affects him to do the same. By coordinating the aids by using light half halts and keeping a lot of release in my rein, I can make him tölt freely and with correct beat. Furthermore, he's carrying himself and to me that's very important since the horse should not lean on the rein, so that the rider has to hold him with his hands, even if the horse is quite willing. Djokni backs up nicely and is rewarded for it. Next, I want to show you how I work with tempo changes in Tölt. I'm riding in slow tempo. I lean forward a little and at the same time release the rein and use my calf to encourage the horse to move forward. I call this exercise impulsion 
and it can best be described by imagining riding under a laundry leg. The benefit of taking the rider's weight off the horse's back, releasing the rein and pushing him forward, is that the horse loosens up in the shoulders, moves more freely and is nicely balanced. After riding five to eight meters, I sit down in the saddle again. This is what could be called to create an atmosphere for the project one is working on. It's also good to straighten the cooperation between man and horse by asking for something the horse knows and is willing to perform. Let us look at the impulsion with Glömer. I am still using my free shank rein hold and Glömer is happy and gives me a great feeling in the saddle. When I need to slow down I try to use a bend with the horse flexed because then he cannot lean into the rein when he's slowing down and needs to rebalance himself. I think we need to take the concept of riding exercises even further. Many of the things we do with the horse can fall under the concept of dress sits. For example, riding gates, gait changes, speed changes, turns and many other things. These are all great exercises. They make the horse better and that is the purpose of riding exercises. Sometimes I feel it's okay to use the shanks for a young horse. I can leave him alone more and it's a change from the snaffle bit. Here we have a slight misunderstanding. It's a rule with me that if the horse does not understand, I slow him down so that I can explain better to him what I want. I call this slow down to come through. If I use a nose band with the shanks, I use the flash nose band. It should not be too tight and the horse needs to be able to move his mouth and chew on the bit. I like using the shanks and here I am underlining the importance of impulsion. I use the basic seat and trot, keeping the rein steady with very light and sometimes even no contact to the mouth. I follow the horse, soften my hips, and you should notice that both my calves and heels are very soft and flexible. It is the basic principle for a good seat. What are me and Liette doing? We? We're just having fun. We should never forget why we started out in horses. It was to have fun and enjoy the horses. This should be our goal in all our work with horses, regardless of what type the horse we are riding. A great competition horse or a calm and gentle family horse. Lietir is a willing horse and a very strong character. By nature he intends to be a bit pacey in the tölt, and in the beginning he was quite pacey. Through the training process that I teach both in my earlier tape and in this one, I've been able to build up excellent tölt.
is very receptive, and from this stance, we can go straight to impulsion and to correct movement. I do this to avoid paciness when I ask him to touch it. Liette is powerful and fast in the trot. I feel it's important when I'm riding trot to follow the movement that comes through the back of the horse. It's important since it's the only way to use my aids precisely and therefore influence the head carriage. This is the best way to stay out of his way and he'll be happier to perform. Here we have an example of natural circumstances in a beautiful environment. Soft sheep trails that are extremely well suited to ride touch. The rider makes sure the horse is thinking forward enough and is precise in the use of his aids. The mood becomes very light and the touch becomes automatically soft and balanced. Every now and then I go riding just to build up endurance. I leave the horses alone as much as possible, ride freely using the natural terrain to train the horses and let them work. This builds endurance and adds variety to the training. For the same purpose, I sometimes take the horses in my trailer to new places where it's nice to ride and train certain things. I emphasize letting out the horses that are stabled and I'm working with. This goes for stallions as well. They have a great need to let off steam and exercise, and if they are allowed to go out in good pastures, when they can move and nipple a little on a regular basis, they are much more receptive to the training when I'm working with them. It's not a good idea to let stallions out together, but I sometimes put them outside at the same time where they cannot reach each other and there is a safe divider, such as a ditch. Then they can talk to each other, run, play and show off without being in danger of hurting themselves. In the stable, they should be in good stalls where they can see what's going on around them. Stallions, like other horses, need variety in training, and I try to provide that. That way, 
they become easier to work with and learn the rules they should follow with a trainer. I think it's a test of their respect towards me, if I can work with them together. If the preparation has been correct, this should not be a big deal. In most cases, I feel the horses I'm working with on a daily basis should be able to be in the role of a working horse and I should be able to lead or pony all of them in various ways. Here I am softening and strengthening the form of Tintur, both in Tölt and Trot, and I use Bjartur as my workhorse. This creates a fun atmosphere for the horses, and they have good influence on each other. Even if they are watching each other most of the time, they are listening to me, and the work becomes more interesting. Warm-up can be performed in different ways. Here, for example, we let the horses warm up by running freely before we mount them. When this has been done, it's good to start riding Tölt. Pati's tilt has improved a lot. He's becoming more straight, which means both his sides are becoming equally strong. We are on our way to practice the final pace exercise. The purpose of my assistant is to get my horse more forward thinking by letting his horse run close to me. I control the speed and he should not interrupt me or my horse in any way. I keep the speed at minimum while I'm cueing my horse to pace. I allow Djaukni to find his balance and then I ask him to speed up. The assistant is right where he should be. After the pace, there's a period that I choose to call the spark. It means that I use the power and feeling from the pace sprint and ask the horse to tölt. If the pace has been successful, the horses are often prepared to tölt well, and I make a use of that with Pate's assistance. We are riding side by side, and this can also be a good test of leadership and keeping the horse under control. In my mind, pace training is about utilizing the natural ability the horse has to move fast and run, without abusing its flight instinct. This is a challenging and interesting project. And when I feel that the horse is working on its own, I know I have reached my goal. I know that both Djaukne and Bjartur will be faster in pace, they have good preparation, but building up the overall strength and technique in pace takes two to three years. Here, as always, the timing of demands must be precise and correct. Haira needs a shorter distance. One has to know the limits of each horse and focus the training in the right direction. Often one hears about the leadership role between man and horse, but sometimes the cooperation is in such a way that there is no leader. We are simply working together. Here we see Ljetil. He's a fully trained horse in pace. He is powerful and responds quite well to slowing down, 
although he's a very willing horse. Here, the pace cue is well prepared, and he starts to pace right away. Through the rain, I let him know I'm there, and I keep his head up a little, and use my calves to encourage him forward. And then, the spark. Using the tempo from the pace sprint, same place, same direction, right after the pace. Ljetir is a good example of a willing and well-trained Icelandic five-gated horse with big movements and speed. One side of my training system is to go every now and then to a new environment and improvise, to figure out what I have to play with. This is a test of the things I've been working on with the horse, and also a test on our cooperation and my leadership. Tintur has never been here before, and the only surroundings we have here are provided by nature, grass and riverbanks, that help me create a special atmosphere. Here I am preparing an exercise that I call turning the forehand, and to show how sensitive horses are, I take off half my glove and barely touch the horse while I have very light contact with the rein. It's my experience that if the horse is content and listening, he will respond better to shuttle aids. Let's not make things complicated for us, or the horse. Tinder is happy and ready to play. I emphasize softness and good head carrots. The part of the training where I worked with Tinder in the double lunge was very important for him. It helped the horse to flex nicely at the pole and be soft in his neck. When I'm riding him, I use this preparation, precise cues, and keep my rein contact alive. Sometimes he goes out of frame, as I call it, loses his head carriage, and sometimes he's in the frame, but I never force him to flex or yield. If I'm careful with my own balance, he will start to feel comfortable in the frame, since he's never forced to be there. To ride trot is a big part of building strength, but let us keep in mind that before a horse can become strong, he must first become soft. That's the only way for him to work correctly and for the muscles to develop. Let's keep in mind that a soft horse is a happy horse. Between the more demanding touch work for the horse, I allow Tinted to walk and leave him alone. Turn on the haunches is an exercise that is primarily good for coordination of the aids. 
A good workhorse needs to be very flexible to be able to serve his purpose, and then the turn and the hunches is a good exercise. Here I am flexing Tinto to the left. I keep more weight on the left seat bone, use the right rein on the neck and the crop on his shoulder. I use my right calf behind the girth. The coordination of the eights, the right rein, the crop and right calf works to move his front sideways. There is a light contact on the left rein and the left calf is in the front of the girth and encourages the horse to move forward. Here the preparation for the canter depart is good. It's a very good exercise for the horse if it's flexible, in good balance and can keep even speed and tempo at the canter. Canter is related to all the other gates and therefore good for all of them, especially to increase agility. We can see this in the canter itself as well in other gates. The horse loosens its shoulders and there is more action and freedom in its movements. All horses are stronger on one side, and to canter them on both hands evens out this unevenness between sides. I focus myself to be also in canter, meaning that I am aware of the movement of the horse and my seat is with the horse. I keep a soft give and take in my inside rein and sometimes I give both reins. This is my way to thank the horse. Let's not go across the lake to fetch the water. Here we see the good old serpentine. The horse is always flexed and is moving forward soft in both sides. A good overall exercise and great for Tölt in particular. Now it's time for the pace. I ride Tindur forward in trot, change the mood and prepare a canter depart. I keep the speed slow and cue him to pace and then I follow the movement and encourage him to speed up to the level that he is now ready to perform at. Tintur is five years old and promises good talent. We are content and he tells me that the pace will be no problem and that he just needs more time to develop it. Glömmer is somewhat advanced in the pace training. and I assume that with ongoing training for approximately a year, I will have found out how good the pace will become. We are going on a trip. All the horses, except the stallions, come with us, and then some from our friends. This is basically a pleasure trip for the horses and the people, but nevertheless quite important. The horses get away from the regular work areas and enjoy being free with the herd. The varied terrain makes them more experienced and they will become more self-confident and learn how to evaluate different situations. They will also learn where to put their legs. This is an important part of training the athletic horse.
we are headed towards Kaldormelar, a well-known track in West Iceland. It will take us seven to eight hours to go there, with breaks. There's a big championship at Kaldormelar, and we are going to participate in few events. The championship starts in two days, so there's enough time to rest and prepare. The horses are in good shape and seem to enjoy the trip as well as we do. One can measure the development and competence of a horse in more ways than taking it to a competition. For example, by simply taking it into the pasture and sorting horses. Here we have Djaukni with two mares. I want to drive them away from him and keep them apart. The question is, will Klömer be obedient enough and is he quick enough? This worked, and after a little while I ride to Djaukni and cue him that he can go back to the mess. Here, I get the opportunity to ride around the horses on the circle. The loose horses don't mind since they feel I'm not placing any demands on them. And this is a far more interesting classroom than being closed up in the arena. Here I am riding Klima and leading Ljetir. I want to work with him in the double lunge on the way back. I ride in Tölt and get Ljetir to do the same. All is going according to plan. But it doesn't always. I look at the bright side. It's great how well Glima leads behind me. I want to enjoy being alone with Ljetir and go to the beats, since I cannot imagine a better footing than a good beats. When the horse does not know the environment, one has to allow him to take a good look so he can be unafraid. Ljetir needs to explore this living water, but after doing so, he goes into it without hesitation. Who says you can't try a turn on the haunches in water? Remember, variety. A sea bath is also refreshing. It's a unique feeling to be on a good horse in such circumstances. Here we have everything. The sea line, waves, endless space and many other things that create the perfect mood to draw out the best qualities of an Icelandic Geithingur. 
even if I'm writing in an organized way here, it doesn't mean I always do that when writing under such circumstances. Sometimes I just write, and don't make any special demands other than deciding which skate I want to use. Then I just enjoy life. The right mixture of things creates good results. Lietir can be quite hot under certain circumstances, but I can cue him to canter by using the bend. This he knows very well. It's always helpful to pause a little and oversee the development of the training process. Let's do that now. Thank you. 
Finally, let's remember one thing. When the horse was born, he knew how to walk, trot, dance around in tölt, and to pace. He also knew how to back up and turn around in all directions. We are not teaching him anything. He knows it all. What we are doing is to ask him to do those things with us. And that is called harmony. Thank you.